Before we get started with today's podcast, I want to take this opportunity to ask you when the last time it was that you changed out the air filter in your home. Now, would you believe that most people don't change out their air filters monthly or even know that they have to change them out monthly or until they realize that something is actually wrong with their HVAC system? That's why I want to introduce to you Second Nature Air Filters. Now, what's so special about them? Not only are they effective at capturing the dust, pollens, the molds, uh, you know, the, the bacteria, but they also help reduce the energy usage of your HVAC system up to 15% and avoid costly repairs whenever it matters the most. But let's be real. The real reason you're not changing your air filters, duh, is because you forget half the time. You're like how I used to be. That's why I went with Second Nature Air Filters. Second Nature has created a subscription plan to send your home's air filters Each month, right to your door, which forces you to change out your old air filters before the new one arrives, keeping your air clean and your HVAC system in working condition. I've certainly noticed that regular replacement of my home's air filters has reduced the amount of dust flying around in my place, but has also reduced how much I've been sneezing in my place. Before, I was changing out my air filter every three months, and I was sneezing constantly. Now that I change out my filter monthly... I hardly ever sneeze. This is all thanks to Second Nature's filter subscription plan, and it's the one delivery that I actually look forward to every month. Get started with Second Nature Air Filters today with my referral link at thepodcasttherapist.com slash second nature. Mixed Down Media Productions. Today's episode of The Podcast Therapist is brought to you by the Adobe Creative Cloud. Creativity is everywhere, and all you need are the right tools to turn those creative ideas into reality. Whether it's building stunning new artwork to promote your podcast, editing simple videos for your video podcast, or stepping up your audio production game, the Adobe Creative Cloud gives you access to Adobe's entire suite of software products that will enhance your content creation across all digital platforms. Go to thepodcasttherapist.com slash Adobe to learn more and get started today. So you've been thinking about wanting to start a podcast for yourself, but you don't know exactly where to start. That's where this podcast episode is going to come in handy. Today, we are going to break down all the steps you need to take to start a podcast. And we're going to start first with the equipment and go from there. Also, a little later, we're going to explore and reveal the real reason why I started The Podcast Therapist and how that name came to be. That's all coming up next. Unbalanced piece of audio from losing your shit. This is the Podcast Therapist. Hello there, and welcome to the very first episode of the Podcast Therapist. My name is Shannon Hernandez. I'm a radio broadcaster, podcaster, and podcast producer, and most recently given the name Podcast therapist and that's uh, a whole other story for a little bit later we'll discuss after a little while so I'm very happy to have this very first podcast episode that I can share with you uh, who is uh, going to be hopefully a a longtime subscriber to this particular podcast and uh, I have a lot of intentions and um, ideas for this particular podcast that I want to share with you so uh, I look forward to building the relationship with you with this particular podcast now this podcast the podcast therapist is a part of my own uh, personal website, theshanman.com. And so um, if you ever hear me talking about certain links and where to find them, I might refer more towards thepodcasttherapist.com that will lead directly to uh, my website, theshanman.com. So what I have to share with you will be a lot of information that is going to take you to the next level and help you build and develop a podcast that is going to sound legit. I mean, that's the intention of what this podcast is all about, not only for this first episode, but for all the subsequent episodes that will come after this particular episode. So be on the lookout for uh, tips, tricks from people who are going to be pros in their craft. And so uh, I also want to share with you what I have learned over the years of me being in radio for the last 20 years and what works best with audio. You know, in the time that I have uh, been a podcast producer, which is something that I really love to do, but in that time, I've learned a lot of tips and tricks that really could benefit the podcaster themselves. And these are a lot of, of strategies and tips and skills that podcasters kind of refuse to implement. They refuse to learn because it might take more time or it might take 
uh, it might cost them money. And really, this is not about the money. It's not about the time. It's more about being effective with your time and money, knowing where to spend that money and knowing when to spend that time learning something that is brand new. So that's what I have for the intention with this particular podcast. And of course, with any of the guides that I share with you, they all have the best intention to help you out and help you become a better podcaster. So again, welcome to this very first episode. And I got to admit, I'm trying to find my groove doing a podcast audio format itself uh, alone on its own because, um, you know, I've been doing YouTube videos for the past, oh, I'd say, let me see, past, past three years. I restarted my YouTube channel back in 2017. If you've never seen my YouTube channel, just go give it a look. It's just the, uh, it's just uh, Shannon Hernandez. It's not even called the podcast therapist. Uh, it's Shannon Hernandez. And if you look up Shannon Hernandez, Hernandez podcasting, a lot of my videos should show up. But back in 2017, I believe it was May of 2017, I started with a YouTube channel. It really didn't have too many uh, subscribers to that particular channel. And that was a time when I decided that I wanted to go ahead and get serious with my, uh, my efforts to, I guess, build an online business through YouTube. And I knew that I wanted to start a podcast, but I knew that I had to show visuals with my YouTube channel in order to get podcasters to really, I guess, bite on to what I was trying to teach them. So at the time, back in May of 2017, I had 941 subscribers to that YouTube channel. And those subscribers were people who were fans of me um, just as a radio personality. Uh, They were people who had uh, subscribed to my channel because I was posting funny videos up on that particular channel. And they were like, uh, you know, people just liked the, the goofiness of that particular channel. And then I let that channel go dormant and it really didn't do anything with it, but I kept acquiring these subscribers to my YouTube channel. And one, I believe it was back in 2016. I believe it was 2016 could have been a couple years earlier, but all I remember was that I had released a video on my YouTube channel that was titled how to become a great podcast host and i recorded that video without even knowing what i was doing with that particular video itself i didn't know what that video was going to do i just knew that i needed to put something up on youtube i didn't know anything about consistency i didn't know anything about search engine optimization and keywording i didn't know anything about that and when i made that video and a couple of other videos on top of it I let them go and came back to them in May of 2017 to learn that they had thousands and thousands and thousands of views on YouTube. And that is when I really started to get motivated and wanted to share my knowledge with podcasters, people who were looking to start an audio only podcast. Now, since then, podcasters have kind of likened podcasting to doing video podcasts because now we're seeing things and people like Joe Rogan and Mark Maron and a lot of these uh, comedians and and just people who are creating podcasts and putting them up on, uh, up on YouTube. And is that podcasting? To a degree, yes, it is because what we're seeing is more of this ubiquity or, or this uh, all around encompassing way to consume content and YouTube just happens to be one of those platforms. But it's one of the platforms that I do believe podcasters do not know about because they don't know and understand how to use YouTube. So we're going to get into that way later down the line and I want to explore and probably interview someone who can back up what I have learned while using YouTube. But in this particular podcast episode, and for the majority of these podcast episodes, at least what I'm anticipating, is that we are focusing specifically on audio itself. We're, sp- we're, we're focusing on the areas of audio, on how to make your audio sound way more legit, professional, make it sound as though someone had produced it at a radio station studio. Now, there is a specific skill that comes with creating uh, quality audio. And I think this is something that has to be, uh, that has to be, I guess, made aware of to you as the podcaster is that, uh, you know, especially since podcasting has become more of a thing, there are a lot of companies out there that are saying, you know, well, you can start a podcast really easy directly from your phone. And that's how you start podcasting. And this is great because it's getting people to understand and get interested in podcasting and going a little bit further. But where I think the disconnect is when it comes down to creating a podcast is that a lot of podcasters, I would say 
I don't know if this is a real number, but I would say if I were just to guess off the top of my head, 70 to 80 percent of the podcasts out there are just podcasts that are people are just fooling around. They're grabbing their phone and they're recording into their phone and they're doing something via, say, say Anchor or maybe they're doing something, say, through CastBox. And that's how they create their podcast. What's interesting about this particular method of podcasting is that podcasters get the bug. They want to create something that's more. They want to start creating something that is more like a radio broadcast. And that's how I've always looked at podcasting. I've always looked at podcasting as just an extension of radio broadcasting. That's it. But what happens with these people who record directly into their phone through these apps is that they want to do more. They want to have cleaner audio. They want to have a more professional sound. They want to learn how to keep people engaged. They want to keep people coming back and subscribing to the particular podcast itself. And so that's whenever they start diving into the equipment. That's when they start diving into what it's going to take to make a podcast sound more like a radio program than just something that is done off their phone. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that podcasters of this nature can't podcast and on their phone and that's all they're doing. I've, I've heard podcasts that do this, you know, all the time, but they want to take it to the next level and then they find the excuses as to why they can't afford getting the equipment. And we're going to jump, in, jump into that here in a little bit. So I really want to dive into getting into your head in a positive way about why we are getting the equipment. These are all aspects that I talk about on my YouTube channel and all these aspects that I've mentioned on my YouTube channel require a little bit more of an explanation of why we buy equipment for our podcast. So this is part of the reason why the podcast therapist was created, because I also was getting questions from other people saying, well, why do I need to get a mixing board? Why do I need to get a, a microphone that is higher quality than just what's on my phone? Why do I need to use a uh, you know, uh, digital audio workstations that cost money. And there's reasons behind all of this. There's reasons why the professionals in the field are using these pieces of equipment and software. So we're going to explore that in this particular episode and possibly maybe even in subsequent episodes. And you'll see the reasons as to why I am creating episodes using these tools. I want to remind podcasters that just because they have the tool doesn't mean that they are skillful at utilizing that tool. For instance, just because you have a Shure SM7B microphone, a $400 microphone, doesn't make you the best podcaster out there, doesn't make you the best broadcaster. At the radio station, we have RE20 microphones with all kinds of processors that run through that microphone. Actually, the microphone runs through those processors is what I should say. And all of that equipment, can cost thousands and thousands of dollars, but it doesn't necessarily make me the best broadcaster out there. There are plenty of other broadcasters out there that are way better than I am. So I really want to bridge this gap where there's a disconnect with podcasters who think that they're just going to automatically have the downloads. They're automatically going to have great audio. They're automatically going to become a better presenter. These are all misconceptions that I think podcasters have when they want to jump in to becoming a podcaster. And we have to realize that a lot of the things that we're creating as podcasters takes practice. It always takes practice. This is a hard lesson to learn because I think podcasters don't get that it's always going to take practice. They think that it's automatically going to be something that they're really great at doing. I mean, there are people who know how to crack a mic open and they're just really automatically great at doing it. I wasn't like that. It took me about six years to get really comfortable in front of a microphone when I was in the radio industry. But for you, you're going to have to practice at this. You're going to have to get better. You're going to have to figure out that there is a comfort level that you need to get and have with the microphone. Not only with you and the microphone, but you and your digital audio workstation and you and your audience. It's always going to take practice. So that's something that I think you should really take to heart. Just like with anything. As an example, let me just share with you a quick example. So as I'm recording this, it is uh, November 29th of 2020. So we are what, like eight months into the 
pandemic of 2020. And Back in March, when all of this started going on, I decided that I needed to, you know, figure out a way to exercise a little more because the gyms were closing and I couldn't go to the gym anymore. And I was really kind of stuck in my own rut of things because when I would go to the gym, it was always the same for me. It was either uh, just do cardio the whole time. I mean, you'll, there's different variations of what people will tell you, like just do all cardio or you need to be lifting weights. But for me, what worked for me was that I was just doing cardio every day, 30 minutes a day, get on a treadmill, run for 30 minutes and then call it a day. Then that to me got a little bit boring. Then I started just walking on a treadmill that got a little boring. Then I started doing a Stairmaster and that seemed to break up the monotony of a lot of things, but it wasn't really learning anything that was new. Then I took up weight training and then weight training was something brand new. It was fresh for me and it took a little bit of practice. It took practice to learn how the correct form was for uh, a squat, um, for deadlifts, whatever it may have been. But when those gyms shut down in March and I couldn't go to the gym just to do something as basic as run, I had to take up a whole new level of exercise. And even though I resisted when the gyms shut down, You know, the resist was actually I was going out for walks. There's a canal that is by my house and I was going for 40 minutes to 40 minutes to an hour uh, to walk so I could get a little bit of exercise and some sunshine. And one day I happened to uh, be walking it and I, I stepped on the edge of the pavement and I rolled my ankle into the dirt. And then that was that I just couldn't exercise anymore. That was, I think, the end of March and April. So I had to learn something that was brand new. Couldn't go to the gym, couldn't run, couldn't do anything. So what did I do? <laughs> For me, it was something that I was, I don't know if it was, I wouldn't say that I was ashamed. There was no shame that came with this, but I started taking up yoga. And little did I know that yoga was the one thing in my life that I had to practice every day to get better at the other things that I wanted to do in my life. So what am I talking about? So after I sprained my ankle, it was hard for me to walk on anything. So I had to start utilizing these poses. I had to get into these lunges and I had to hold these lunges and they killed my right ankle. My right ankle was the one that I sprained it. It just killed my right ankle and I couldn't, I couldn't do much on it. Couldn't hold balance, nothing like that. But over time, as I continued to practice every single day, the same routine over and over and over, and I told myself, I am going to practice this routine until I get really good at it. I will move and then I'll move on to the next one. And when I got good with those first 20 minute workouts, then I moved to a 40 minute workout that included and incorporated different moves. Little did I know that not only was I strengthening my core and my abs and my mental health, but I was also strengthening the ligaments and the tendons throughout my body, especially my sprained ankle. And it wasn't up until about, oh, I'd say last week as of this recording, maybe two weeks ago as of this recording, I made the decision that I wanted to get out and get some sun because, you know, the sun has been going down a lot earlier these days. And so I went ahead and I got in uh, the mood and there's a mountain that that is about 10 minutes away from my house, a 10 minute drive to the the trailhead. And uh, I was a little afraid because I wasn't sure what to expect, how I've rolled my other ankles have been on the mountain where it's been uneven uh, ground and I've rolled those ankles and, and it's been hard to come off the mountain. So I wasn't too sure. But when I got up on that mountain and I started hiking and I was making my way up towards the summit of where I wanted to be, I learned that with all of the practice that I had done with yoga, that my hike was significantly better than when I wasn't doing yoga. When I wasn't doing yoga, it felt like I had to climb Mount Everest just to get to the summit. But when I incorporated a brand new skill, a brand new tool to help me become better at my hikes, and when yoga was that answer, Not only did I find that I was able to climb that mountain a little easier, but my ankle had a lot more stability to manage the rocky terrain and get up to the top, and I didn't feel as winded. So what does this have to do with podcasting? 
This is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to podcasting. Just because you want to use a specific piece of equipment doesn't mean it's the one that is going to get you to the next level of your podcasting experience. You have to start incorporating possibly better equipment, better microphones, better mixing boards, better software. And when you master those pieces of software, that is when you take your podcast to the next level. And when you become better on that level, that's when you start stepping up the game. So we're going to leave it right there. And coming up here shortly, we are going to break down and start exploring what you need to do to get your podcast started. We're going to jump into that equipment. I already have this equipment on my website that you can check out. But we're going, to jo- we're going to give you an explanation of why I'm using this equipment and why I believe you should be using this equipment and whether or not it's going to work for you. Because if it doesn't work for you, then maybe you just skip on to the next episode and then you call it a day, all right? But I'm going to give you the reasons why I use this particular uh, equipment. And then maybe a little bit later, we will jump into uh, launching that particular podcast. So, uh, so much more to talk about uh, in today's episode. We'll be right back. podcast therapist to a lot of you coffee is the nectar of the morning wake up gods right i totally love that feeling just like you of being awake especially as i get older adulting tends to get a little bit harder it wasn't until i made a visit to the doctor a few years back and i was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and i had to give up all of the caffeine in my life including coffee You see, even though caffeine can wake you up and make you feel alive for some part of the morning, it also has side effects like the jitters, anxiety, and you'll get terrible sleep. All of the things that I was experiencing. That's when I discovered mud water. Mud water is a coffee replacement with one seventh the caffeine of coffee that actually gives me energy, focus, and immunity without jitters, crashes, or a downside. So what's in it? Mud water is a mixture of herbs, spices, and magic mushrooms that dial in on your immunity, boost your clarity, creativity, and your mood. I can't tell you how much of a difference it has made in my life in the last few months. So lose the jitters and find more focus with mud water. Get your mud water starter kit today at thepodcasttherapist.com slash mud water. That's thepodcasttherapist.com slash M-U-D-W-T-R to learn more and get your first can and frother today. It's time for the mix down. The Podcast Therapist. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Podcast Therapist. And in this particular section of the podcast, we are going to break down all of the equipment that I'm using. And it's not too much. And there's a reason why I use this equipment. Now, this equipment may work for you. It may not work for you. But what I will say and what I will encourage to you, the the person who is listening to this and looking to start a podcast, is that I encourage you to download my essential equipment guide to starting up a podcast. You can find that at thepodcasttherapist.com slash quick start. So uh, jump on over there, download this guide. If you, um, you know, maybe you're driving, maybe you're cooking dinner, maybe you are working out, uh, maybe you just don't have time to really, you know, look at the guide yet, but you want to get this information. um, It's available for you at the podcast therapist.com slash quick start. So we're going to go over it in this particular section. And uh, we're going to start with uh, what the idea is with your podcast. So we really have to start from that very beginning when it comes down to the conception or the birth of the podcast. Now, why do you want to start a podcast? And there are many reasons why people want to start a podcast. Maybe they want to make someone laugh. Maybe they want to educate someone. And typically, whenever we are starting up a podcast, those are the two things that Uh, most podcasters don't realize that they're doing is that they're either educating or they are entertaining someone. And there are plenty of podcasts out there that do both of these things. But what we realize is that we want to create a a podcast that has quality content that will help someone or that will entertain someone. That's really all it is. All right. And if your content is good, then we can get people to come back and listen to the podcast. So we think about that first idea 
Why do we want a podcast? What is your why? You're going to hear a lot of people talk about why. what is your why? Why do you want a podcast? And typically, most podcasters will say, well, I want to start a podcast because of X. And the answer that I hear to a lot of podcasters is say they, they say, oh, I want to start a podcast because I want to make money. And I, I will have to just agree with a lot of the other people who have started podcasts about podcasting or YouTube channels about podcasting. I will have to agree with a lot of them and say like, this isn't the case. You should not start a podcast so that you want to make money. You should start a podcast because you want people to listen because money is what comes way later down the line. Now, don't get me wrong. What I want to share with you in these episodes are a lot of, it, there are a lot of steps to seed your monetization efforts. So just know that if you're going to create a podcast, understand why you want to create the podcast. I would say outside of just making money, you have to be able to create content that is going to be downloadable and listenable for your audience. That's the most important thing. All right. Now, if you want to create a podcast that is outside your phone, and this is really where I want to lead podcasters. I want to, I want to create a setup for them that they will not regret having later down the line. So as an example, a lot of people who come to my YouTube channel and they say that, oh, well, I'm going to get this particular piece of equipment that has only cost me 50 bucks and this microphone that only cost me 25 bucks. That's fine. You can go ahead and download or you can go ahead and buy that equipment. The one thing that I will say, and it just seems to be true each time I get a piece of cheaper equipment is that equipment lasts. It doesn't last very long. Let's just put it that way. It, it just doesn't last. It breaks down. You're having to exchange it. And it just is going to waste time and money for you. Now, does this mean you have to go out and buy thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment? No. With this guide and what I'm sharing with you today is going to share with you the most efficient equipment that you can use to start your podcast. Okay, so what you need to expect when it comes down to a podcast is you need to expect to come up with this idea and you need to come up, expect to come up with a name. And we're going to jump into that maybe in another episode. But if we're going to create this podcast, we need to start coming up with which equipment is the best. All right. Now, the equipment that I have been using, I've been using it probably for about, oh, gosh, I would say seven to eight years, close to 10 years, I believe, since I've had... um you know, other versions of what I am using and I have upgraded along the way. This doesn't mean that you have to get the most equipment, the most expensive equipment right now it just means you have to get the equipment to get started. OK, so today I want to start first with the hardware. OK, and the hardware that I'm using to record this very podcast that you're listening to right now. And it's the same hardware that I use to create my YouTube videos. Now, we're going to leave the camera portions out of that. I mean, it's pretty simple, but we're going to leave the camera portions out of that because I don't want to get into YouTube podcasting quite yet. I want to focus specifically on audio. So the first piece of equipment that we're going to be using is something called a Yamaha MG10XU input USB mixing board. This mixing board is available in that guide that I had mentioned at the podcasttherapist.com slash quick start. Now, this mixing board has 10 inputs and this mixing board will do it all for you. It's mainly used for live sound, but Yamaha has gotten smart about this. They have said, you know, well, we realize that there are people who like to record uh, their microphones or their music or their, you know, maybe their guitars or their drum tracks into a digital audio workstation. So we're going to include a USB out or a USB plug that plugs out of the mixing board and into your laptop or your computer of some sort. And you record, you can record into a digital audio workstation. Now, when I first saw, saw this uh, mixing board, I actually had the analog version of this board back in the day. And when <laughs> it was actually kind of amusing whenever I got this mixing board, because at the time I had a PC, um, I have Mac products now, but I had a PC and uh, I had to utilize a lot of wires. There's a lot of connectors and extenders, and it just made the process a lot more, uh, more complicated than anything else. But then when Yamaha came out with a mixing board that had USB capabilities, it eliminated a lot of the, the wires that I had to connect to my computer, and it just included one wire. 
and that wire was a USB cord. That's all I needed. So you're going to see here that you have 10 inputs. You're going to have four inputs for uh, microphones, and then you're going to have uh, another five inputs for different things that you want to create. And one of those inputs being the USB port. Okay, so it means that with that USB port or that USB channel, I should call it the channel. With that USB channel, you can run sound from your computer into your mixing board and then back out of your mixing board and into your digital audio workstation. This is how I record a lot of phone calls. This is how I record a lot of Zoom calls. This is what is going to make or break uh, your podcast when it comes down to you wanting to create higher quality audio when it uh, when when you're doing it over Zoom or you're doing it over phone. It gives you more versatility when you're recording guests on a podcast. Now, as of this particular recording, I've gotten a couple of comments on my YouTube channel and someone saying, well, um, not someone, there's actually quite a few people that come to this channel or my channel and they say, well, I'm going to get the focus right two by two, uh, you know, focus right. Uh, it's a, it's a little amplifier for microphones. And to them, I always say, well, okay, you can have that focus, right? But it is limited in what you can do. And what they say to me is like, well, this is all I need. And I say, well, not necessarily because you're going to need a lot more. The things that the Focusrite miss out on, and I believe it's something that I think that they should upgrade into their um, their hardware, is the ability to have a USB out. Now, they do have USB plugs on the unit itself, but it doesn't allow this ability for you to loop sound through a mixing board into a computer, back out and into a digital audio workstation. It just doesn't exist. And this little focus right probably costs about the same amount than what you're looking for when it comes down to the Yamaha 10 uh, MG 10 XU mixing board. The Yamaha, I believe, runs, I believe, $300. And I think that focus right costs about the same amount of money. Maybe it's $100 cheaper. I haven't looked lately. But all I know is that if it were me, I would rather have much more capability over limited capability. So the Yamaha MG 10 XU mixing board is what I go with. Now, you might say to yourself, or you might be telling me, Shannon, well, what about the Rodecaster Pro? The Rodecaster Pro, for those of you who are not familiar with the Rodecaster Pro, this is a mixing board that um, Rode has come out with that is supposed to mirror very similar to what you would see at a radio station. And I actually like that mixing board. In fact, someone had reached out to me uh, about three weeks ago as of this recording and said, I have a Rodecaster Pro and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to get the setup that you have made on your YouTube channel. So I told her, let's do a call and we'll figure it out for ourselves. And with that Rodecaster, it's pretty much the basic setup. It's the same setup that I have listed on my YouTube channel uh, for the video called, I believe, the basic podcast setup. I'll leave a link in today's show notes for that particular video if you're interested. So if you're in today's show notes on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, there should be a link in the show notes of your phone app or or maybe you're watching this or you're viewing this on your computer. But the Rodecaster Pro just has a few little tweaks that you would need to make. And it's actually a really cool board. It is the closest thing that you could use to being in a radio station itself. It's got faders. It has this ability to use something called mix minus, which we can get into a little bit later. But um, it's actually more efficient than the Yamaha MG10XU. But the difference is in the pricing. The difference is another $300. So we're looking at the Yamaha MG10XU at $300, and then you're looking at the Rodecaster Pro at $600. Now, it doesn't mean that this mixing board you know, the, the the cost on it is going to make or break. It just depends on what you want to get. But I would recommend staying staying away from the cheaper equipment or the equipment that just is more limited and apply your, your, your money to the equipment that is going to allow you more versatility later down the line. Because I know, I know somewhere down the line, you are going to want to record Zoom calls that aren't as low quality than what you're getting if you're recording through the software Zoom itself, okay? Now, these missing boards, wonderful. I think they are great. 
the next question I get is, can I use a Zoom H6? So when I talk about Zoom H6 versus Zoom software, they are two completely different things, all right? So when we say like the Zoom H6, it is a field recorder. A Zoom H6 is a field recorder. Can it work for podcasting? Absolutely, 100%. Is it efficient when it comes to recording uh, and saving you time? Not really, because it is an audio field recorder. You're taking it out into the field. And that is where I think you, as a podcaster, you could live without it. Now, let's say you are traveling for work and maybe you want to use the Zoom H6 recorder and that's the only way that you can record podcasts, then I'd say, yeah, go ahead. Use that recorder. And then you can figure out the setup from there and we're, you know, recording it and dumping the audio into your digital audio workstation to create podcast. For me, just doesn't cut it because as of what we're doing right now, I'm recording directly into my digital audio workstation for this podcast. And the only step that I have to do when I'm done with this podcast recording is press stop. And then I, I just do my work. I do my post -pro post production processing, go in, edit a few things out, and we call it a podcast. With the Zoom H6 recorder, it requires that you have an SD card. And I can't even remember how many gigs you need to have for the SD card. But um, I believe you need to have, I, I think it's like 256 gigabytes, I think. That's what I have for my camera. And I know that's a lot of space for, you know, photos. But with audio and the Zoom H6, you're recording in a WAV format versus an MP3. So you're recording in a WAV format and that takes up a lot of space. So taking that SD card and moving that audio from your, uh, you know, from the SD card into your laptop, my, it's going to just take time. Me, I like to just cut the steps in half that are unnecessary. But if that is the only way that you want to go, or the only way that you can go, I should say, then go that way. One thing that I should note with the Yamaha, I'm sorry, one thing that I should note with the Rodecaster Pro is that the Rodecaster has the ability to have an SD card plugged into it and record the show directly onto that SD card, record it again in a wave, but you don't have to do that. My basic podcast setup allows you to record directly into the digital audio workstation. So this is why I do this. I'm eliminating steps away from what, just takes too much time. After eight to 10 years of doing this, I was like, you know what? I am, I do not want to use the SD card to keep plugging it in and, you know, plugging it into something else. I mean, right now, when I'm recording my YouTube videos, I'm already doing that with my camera. I'm taking out an SD card. I'm having to plug it in. And let's say you have a brand new Macintosh computer like I do. And they don't even, they don't even have the ports for you to plug in the card. You have to go and buy an adapter. So I try to make the processes far more simple. So again, my recommendation to getting your piece of equipment will be the Yamaha MG10XU mixing board. It's going to make a world of difference. It is far more effective than what you would think. So I recommend that. So the next thing that you would need to get with the Yamaha M MG10XU, you need to get a two, uh, USB 2.0 cable. This does not come with the Yamaha itself. You, so you have to buy a USB 2.0 cable separately. So when you're going on to Amazon, you are going to have to buy that cable. So that's just a heads up for you. So that USB cable is going to plug directly from the output of your mixing board directly into your, uh, your computer. Now, if you have one of the brand new Macintosh computers, like I do, those only have Thunderbolt 3 connectors. So there are no USB ports. So you can go in and you can uh, purchase from Amazon. You can purchase the uh, the USB hubs if you want, or maybe you even get the connectors that connect to the USB uh, plug on the, on the uh, cord itself. And then it'll plug from a USB into a Thunderbolt 3 and then into your Mac. So that's just one way that you can do it. But I have a hub. The hub works just fine. Um, I believe, let me, I'm looking at it right now. I have, it's a three USB uh, port hub. It's got an HDMI. It's got the inputs to where you can put the SD card, uh, a normal SD card, also a mini SD card and an input to where you could plug in, say if you had an iPhone or 
something like that. You could plug in an iPhone and charge your, your iPhone directly into that hub. So that really comes in handy, especially if you have uh, one of the newer Macs that doesn't have USB plugs into them. But if you have a PC, it might be a little bit easier for you. So let's move next into microphones and let's talk about which microphone that you should get. Now, there's all kinds of microphones that are out on the market right now. They will vary. It'll depend on what type of microphone that you want ultimately at the end of the day. OK, so just just know know that microphone quality does matter, but it's not going to make or break your podcast. So if you have to start out on the lower end with microphones, that's completely fine. But if you want to, you can go higher end and get those microphones. You won't have to replace those microphones for a really long time. And in fact, some of the microphones that I still have, uh, they I probably could still be using them today, but I have upgraded into different microphones. So I'm just going to name a couple of microphones. I'll even name the microphone that I have that I'm using for this particular podcast. But you don't have to get any one particular particular microphone. Now, if you're trying to save money, then there might be a set of microphones that you will want to get, but they all cost about the same amount of money okay so the microphone that you could use and i'm going to start very uh, from the very beginning here the first microphone that you could use will be the uh, audio technica at 2100 x usb microphone now this microphone is very unique just because it has the ability for you to plug the microphone uh, from of course the microphone into your mixing board into one of the four microphone inputs into your mixing board but that particular microphone is also usb capable so let's say for instance that you want to do a podcast interview but instead you are the person that is being interviewed and someone else is doing the interview over zoom or some other other way some other means you can plug this microphone via usb into your uh, computer without having to plug into a mixing board so maybe you're in a pinch maybe you uh, can't take your mixing board on the road with you it just really all depends this this microphone is very versatile it'll allow you to plug directly into your computer itself and I believe you can monitor yourself with headphones into that microphone it's very similar to the blue yeti pro USB microphone or it's a USB and uh, XLR capable microphone I have the pro but that costs about three hundred dollars and that might be a little bit too much for you a little more than what you're expecting how much does the ATR 2100 X cost that I believe is about a hundred dollars so if it's you podcasting it might be worth it but maybe let's say that it's you and a co-host someone who you like to podcast with regularly and they come into your your home or maybe your studio you might want to have a couple of microphones a couple of different stands for them uh so so you could use those microphones get two of them it'll cost you around two hundred dollars so that might be the one that you're using okay so you know you could say that you know hey I don't want to get the AT2100X USB microphone, but I would say that's probably the best bet uh, that you're going to be using because you could go into this next microphone, which would be a Shure SM58. It's a dynamic microphone. These Shure microphones, they're wildly durable, wildly durable. The only difference is that these are not USB capable. They're just directly plugged from the microphone into your mixing board itself, but they're very durable. This is what you would see uh, musicians using on stage for the most part that is what they use um, those range anywhere between I'd say 90 to 100 dollars as well so it's really going to be up to you as to whether or not you want to use this type of microphone but I will say that if you want your podcast to sound a little more legit you want it to sound uh, higher quality these microphones will be the ones that you want to use instead of using say your phone's microphone or anything like that which you can't really even plug into a mixing board at all so that's going to be one of them uh the microphones that you want to get now there's many of other microphones out there that are really good there's the high lpr 40 condenser microphone this has got a really rich sound it's a very cool microphone i don't have this microphone i prefer my microphones to sound a little bit more radio ish so um it's not necessarily that I hate this microphone. I do not hate this microphone. I think that the Heil PR40 is actually a really great microphone, um, but it is a little more expensive. I believe it is in that $300 range. So just so you know, um, you can you know you can get these, but they're going to cost you. I had a couple of clients buy these microphones, and they sound amazing. So uh, it's really going to be up to you. The microphone that I use here at my house, uh, I use a Shure SM7B. This microphone is $400. So you can see the price goes up. Uh, the quality can 
you, you if you've got a really trained ear, you can really tell the difference in quality. But for podcasting, you are not recording a audiobook. You are not recording anything like that. So if you're recording an audiobook, then I would say, yeah, get a high LPR 40. I would go even higher than that. I would look into these uh, microphones that probably cost about a thousand dollars. So those microphones are really, really worth it. And of course, when you got some processing going on in the background with those, uh, meaning that you've got a preamp such as some uh, like a cloud lifter or something like that. But even with more capability, it will make those microphones sound awesome. But you don't necessarily need to use that. So again, you have options there. So you have the AT2100X, which I would recommend that you get. If not, you've got the Shure SM58, which is about the same price as the Audio-Technica. And then it just goes up from there. Next, let's jump into headphones and which headphones or whether or not you should be using headphones. Now, this is a question that I have gotten quite a bit on my YouTube channel and people asking me, well, why would I need to get headphones when I can just use the earbuds that come with my phone? And there is a very specific reason why we use headphones in radio. <laughs> and I don't think people who start podcasts realize that there is a reason why we use a specific headphones. Uh, so when podcasters come to me and they say, I'm going to start using my phone's earbuds or I'm going to use my AirPods for this. I don't think they really know why they're using AirPods. I think that, I don't know if they think it just looks cool or what, but stop using AirPods. Truly. I mean, this is the only time I mean, I probably get snobby about a lot of things. But this is the only time I'm really going to get snobby. Stop using Stop using the AirPods. It looks number one ridiculous when you're using Bluetooth AirPods and you don't even know why you're using them, okay? The reason why we use, I use plugged-in headphones, the reason why radio broadcasters use plugged-in headphones, the reason why you're seeing all these podcasters use headphones that are noise-canceling is because it allows you, the podcaster, to measure the distance between you and the microphone. So typically what you're hearing with most podcasters is that they have a podcast where when they speak into the microphone, and this is the example, when they speak into the microphone, they are typically this far away from the microphone. And so they have to do a lot more speaking, I guess, at a higher volume with their voice. They have to really speak into the, the microphone. And I'm like me, I'm about a foot away from this microphone right now. And so when you're using headphones, yeah, you can hear yourself. But you can't really tell how close you are to the microphone when you get closer to the microphone. And that's part of microphone technique. That's where most podcasters miss this game. OK, this is where they miss this part of the game. They do not realize that headphones are a means for you to monitor how close you are to the microphone and how close you and your guest are close to the microphone or how close they are to the microphone, which gives you the ability in the interview to say, Hey, Chris, can you get a little closer to that microphone? I can't hear you. This is why a lot of podcasters have these podcasts that sound like they're far away. And then when they jump into post-production that the audio just sounds, it just sounds way too over-modulated or buzzy or it sounds, it just doesn't sound right. It's because they don't know how the, how close they need to get to the microphone based on how they hear themselves in the headphones. That's it. Now, the other reason we use headphones is so that we can cancel out not only the noise, we can hear our guests, but so that we can hear mixed in sound. So what do I mean by mixed in sound? Some podcasters, they like to do things live. Let's say like with a Rodecaster Pro, you can mix in sounds with hot keys that are on that particular mixing board where there are shortcut keys that you can hit and those sounds are fed possibly say like into a set of speakers and then into the digital audio workstation. But what happens if someone doesn't know is that they don't they don't know that they have to have their volume down on those speakers. They have to have those volumes turned down to avoid the feedback that goes back into the microphone. So the sound coming from the speakers going into the microphone and feeding back, they don't want that. So that's why we use headphones at the radio station. Whenever we key the mic to go on the air, what happens beforehand is that we hear the music. We hear everything going on just as someone would be listening on the radio. But whenever the, the microphone is keyed, there is a function within the mixing board itself that when we hit the key to turn on the microphone, everything mutes in the studio physically. Everything is muted and the only sound that you should be able to hear would be the sound that is coming into your headphones. But so you can hear everything as though it were on the radio, but without the external noises coming in and feeding back into the microphone. 
That's why we use headphones in radio. That's why you should be using headphones in podcasting. Don't do this business with earbuds or anything like that because they do not have the capability to amplify the sound so you can hear what you're doing. Now, if you want to, that's great, but I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you start using earbuds, you're gonna feed back directly into the microphone. Those little earbuds are not, they, they are not built for broadcast purposes. So you could get close to the microphone and you can start hearing feedback. And that's just really annoying. So just buy some solid noise canceling headphones. Now there's two different headphones that I use. I use a pair here at the house and then I use a pair at home. The one, I'm sorry, a pair at work. The one I use at work would be a Shure uh, SRH 440. This is a hundred dollar pair of headphones. They are durable, they are useful, they are great headphones. But if it were my choice, I would use the ones that I'm using right now. The ones I use right now in my home studio or my home office are Sony uh, MDR 7506s. These are actually what I used in the very beginning of my radio career. And then I switched over to these Shures. And then, of course, you know, you're not going to go back and switch them out after you bought them. And then I went back to these Sonys and they are noise canceling. They sound perfect. They sound great. Very rich sound. You can hear everything through them. These... Uh, Headphones cost anywhere, I believe, I can't give you the exact price on them, you can find them in the guide itself, but I believe they cost anywhere between 60 to $80, but they're really great headphones. Next, let's talk about uh, microphone stands. So I should have covered this over in the microphone section, but I figured let's go ahead and do it right now. Now, this is all going to depend on your setup of what kind of desk you have, or maybe a table that you have. I know that there are podcasters out there that use foldable tables, and then they have like a round table of people who are just, you know, talking and they use just regular microphone stands. They're table stands that you could put on the table and everyone can talk into them. I had a client that did it this way. You don't have to do it this way. The way I, that I do it is that I've got two desks. I got one on the wall, and then I got another one that obviously um, is cornered out on the other end. So you know it's kind of like a corner desk, and um, I've got a boom, a mic boom that basically is it screws directly into the wooden desk. It doesn't, it can't record, it can't screw into this other desk that I have because this other desk that I'm using right now, uh, as I speak, is a standing desk. It's a glass top standing desk and. Uh, the the height of the, I guess, the desk itself or the thickness of the desk uh, will not allow for me to put this mic boom on it. So this mic boom is very useful. We use mic booms, obviously, in radio, but this mic boom, uh, it has a clamp on it that you can put onto your desk. And then, of course, you stick the boom directly into that clamp. And then uh, you can have you can basically eliminate anything that has to deal with table noises. So, like, you can hear me right here. This is what it sounds like whenever I'm just. Uh, th this is this is just my desk. You're just hearing the desk, uh, but that is not connected to the mic boom. If I were to tap this one, you can hear that I'm actually I'm actually moving the desk that has the mic boom on it. So it allows you to eliminate a lot of the the table noises and the table sounds that you would have. So the guide is going to have uh, a list of of microphone stands and booms just for you. Okay, so the next thing that we probably need to think about getting are XLR cables. These range anywhere between $5 to $10. These are what are going to connect into your microphone and into your mixing board. I would recommend that you get two to three of these. Always have an extra one on hand because sometimes these cables do go bad and you never know when you're gonna be in the middle of an interview or a recording and you need an extra cable. So I would always have an extra cable just in case. Now. The next piece that I want to share with you, I know I'm kind of jumping around, but uh, the next piece I want to jump into, let's go back to the headphone section. There is going to be a piece of equipment that you may need if you're doing a podcast in person with multiple people and you all have them using headphones so they can monitor what's going on. Now, does your guest need to absolutely have headphones? No, they do not, but it is helpful. It's always helpful for the guest to know how far they are from the microphone. Now, will every guest know how far they are from the microphone if they're using headphones? Not all the time. They're not radio professionals. They are not uh, someone who records podcasts. So it's going to be incumbent on you to tell these people to get closer to the microphone. But what I'm talking about in this piece of equipment is going to be a headphone amplifier. So what this is, is basically it allows you to feed sound from your mixing board into headphones or multiple headphones. So 
what you're doing is basically is you're getting a connector that plugs into the phone's jack on your Yamaha MG10XU mixing board. And that plugs directly into the small little Behringer headphone amp. This amp then now feeds sound into that amp. And then of course it's got four outputs for headphones. So it could be your set of headphones, it could be your co-host set headphones, it could be your guest headphones and maybe another guest headphone, all right? So it gives you the ability to adjust the volume on those headphones so that people can hear at different volumes. So like for me, I've been in radio for so long, I've used volumes at different, you know, loudness or I guess peaks. And uh, of course I've lost my hearing, some of my hearing, and I need my headphones just a little bit louder than what most people are used to. So the, this headphone amp really comes in handy when you are recording inside of a physical studio itself. So I would recommend that you get that. Now there's a couple of other things that you might wanna get uh, just because the wires on this, I don't believe you're, you're gonna get the wires that you need. It's gonna come with uh, a plug so that you can plug it in and uh, power the, the device, but you're gonna need to get a stereo cable extender uh, just for this, and you're going to need to get some adapters, some stereo adapters. Make sure that these are stereo adapters and not mono. The way you can tell that something is in stereo, if you've ever plugged in a set of headphones with a normal little jack and you see on that jack, maybe it's like you're plugging into your your car, um, you know, you well, though, back in the day, you know, you used to get those cables and you plug it directly into the little headphone jack. The way you can tell whether or not a cable is stereo or mono is that stereo cables will have two little black strips on the tip of that particular connector. You'll see it. It'll be two little strips. If you get one that only has one strip, that means it's mono. It means that you're only going to be getting sound out of one ear or one speaker. So make sure that you are getting the one that has the stereo connector. It's got the two little black strips on the tip of the actual piece of equipment itself. So that is going to be everything that you're going to need to get your recording equipment for your podcast. So how much does this all cost? How much is it going to cost to get all this stuff? So it's going to vary with you, okay? It can be anywhere between $300 to $600. Now, I know that seems like it is a lot of money, but it really isn't when you think about the scheme in the long term, okay? And it really depends on what type of podcast you're doing. There's two different types of podcasts that people like to do. They like to either do a solo podcast or they like to do a podcast with guests. So that might be how you are basing the cost of how um, how much all of this will be for you later on down the line. So now you know kind of what to expect. The setup that I have here, uh, you're talking about $300 with a mixing board, so I have the mixing board, then the USB cable connector from the mixing board into the computer cost me an additional probably like 10 bucks, so you're talking about $310 there. Then you have to talk about maybe maybe the, the USB hub, because I got a brand new Mac, that cost me I think like $20, so what, you're talking 330 right there. Then you gotta think about your microphones and your XLR cables, so let's say you need three XLR cables, well that might be anywhere between 10 to $15 a piece, and then your microphones are going to be a hundred bucks each. So you're looking, let's say you wanna get three microphones, you're going to have $600 off the right off the top right there because you're including it with the mixing board. So that's $600 and then all the little connectors, you're looking anywhere between, oh, six to $700. Now for me, it cost me about 300, you know, 300, 400, $500 for all of this stuff. It's going to depend on your setup and who you want to interview and how you want to interview and what type of podcast that you want to have. So just know that's what you're going to be getting into. So budget out for what you need. Now, do you need to get all of this stuff right off the top of the of the game, you know, right, right off the top of the bat. No, you don't. You can grow it over time. You can get stuff as you get the money. All right. That's what I did. Uh, I got all of my equipment piece by piece. So I would get maybe a mixing board and then I would use an old microphone that I had gotten from someone at work. And then I used that for many, uh, many years. And then I upgraded into a different microphone and then I upgraded into another microphone. Then I got a boom. And so it just really all depends. You don't have to get it all at once, but work with what you got, work with what you can. That is going to make it a lot easier for you so that you aren't feeling a financial pinch. I do not recommend that you go into debt with this stuff, but just know that you're going to be buying this equipment 
and it's going to be a one time purchase only because you're thinking we're thinking about doing a podcast that is going to go on for a long time. So this one time purchase is a great return on your investment if you say interview or create at least 100 podcast episodes. Think about that. You are that's a great return on investment and you don't have to you don't have to buy anything cuz nothing is breaking down on you. So I recommend that you get some quality equipment and just know that you're getting that equipment one time. That's it. All right? So I'm going to leave it right there. We're going to stop with equipment on this particular section. And next week, I want to jump into recording software and talk to you about why I use the recording software that I use. You don't have to use the recording software that I use, but I'm going to tell you the reasons why I use it and why you should get started learning that software right away. So if you have questions about Anything that I have talked about right here, I encourage you to head on over to the podcasttherapist.com slash podcast. And when you scroll down onto the page right there, you can contact me, reach out to me. You can especially leave a voicemail. Now, if you leave a voicemail, I will be able to take that voicemail and maybe feature you in a future podcast and answer your question directly on the podcast itself. So again, go to the podcasttherapist.com slash podcast, scroll down the page and look for the contact me section and uh, leave me either a voicemail, a message, whatever, whatever your means of communication is to have me answer your question. I'll do my best to get that answer to you. So coming back after the break, I want to talk to you about how we started with this name, the podcast therapist, and let's have a little bit of fun and talk to you about that. And, um, I don't know. We'll just try to have a little bit of fun on this particular podcast. We'll be right back. The Podcast Therapist. Right now, you might be in the middle of the research phase of launching your podcast. Maybe you've gotten some equipment, signed up for a Zoom account, and have recorded a few podcast episodes. But what steps do you need to take when it comes to a successful podcast launch? Would you believe the biggest mistake podcasters make is the launch sequence? Seriously, just like a space shuttle has a sequence to put astronauts into space, podcasts have sequences to put a podcast in the marketplace successfully. That's why I created the Podcast Launch Checklist. After helping numerous clients build their podcasts, I developed a step-by-step guide to help podcast creators just like you have a clean launch sequence without wasting time. The Podcast Launch Checklist is a 12-step sequence that walks you through the pre-launch, mid-launch, and post-launch process with specific steps and instructions that will save you time. If you're tired of walking around in the dark trying to figure out everything that comes with a podcast launch, you can grab the Podcast Launch Checklist today. Visit thepodcasttherapist.com slash PLC and use the code PODTHERAPIST, all one word, to get 25% off this checklist today. Unnecessary explanations. Podcast Therapist. Unnecessary explanations. (laughs) Unnecessary explanations. You're probably thinking to yourself, like, didn't he just do that pretty much for the past hour? He just gave you a, a big unnecessary explanation. Maybe you thought that, maybe you didn't. <laughs> but what I'd like to say is that, you know, everything that I shared with you today, there is a reason why I use the equipment that I do. It's, it, you know, may come down to cost. It may come down to functionality. It's what works for me. And I think that you have to find what works for you with your podcast. When I first started in this game, you know, the guys that were first starting out and building out programs that talked about starting a podcast back in the day, you know, they had specific ways of the way they did it. And, you know, I'm no different. I have a specific way in which I do my podcast, but it doesn't have to be yours. You have to do it your own way. So kind of keep that in mind when you go in, you're looking at your equipment and the equipment guide that I shared with you that will really help you out and help you make the best purchasing decision for yourself, all right? So that is going to be very valuable for you. So now let's just jump on into today's unnecessary explanation. And this is a part of the program where I would like to say that we're having a little bit of fun. You get to know a little bit about me and this program. And uh, just, you know, we get to unwind after a really topic heavy podcast. And so it gives you a little bit more of a feeling of who I am. So I wanted to do today's unnecessary explanation 
as uh, how I came up with this podcast, The Podcast Therapist, and uh, the reasons behind why I came up with The Podcast Therapist. Now, I want to give you a little bit of backstory on all of this, okay? So you know that I already have a YouTube channel about podcasting, and you know that there is a different reason of why I wanted to start a podcast. Now, this whole idea of starting a podcast was something that was going on in the back of my head while I was creating my YouTube videos. And in that time of me creating those YouTube videos, I kept saying to myself, you know, I need to come up with a podcast because, you know, I just can't make this stuff you know, I can't make a proof of concept of this stuff without actually having a podcast itself, because what I'm talking about really doesn't apply to what's going on with video. And so that was, that's been going on probably since 2017. I've been like, "Eh, I don't really want to do a podcast because I want to do a YouTube video to show people how to do this stuff. But as I started getting more comments on my YouTube channel, people were like, well, do you have your own podcast yourself? And at the time, I did have a couple of podcasts. I had one called uh, The Swing Shift Side Hustle and one before that called uh, Be the Experience. And that was my first foray, foray into doing my own podcast. But the Be the Experience podcast was more about personal development. And I was going down a very unique path at that time. I was, you know, I had, I was really into fitness. I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm still not into fitness. I'm still do fitness a lot these days. You know, as you know, I now do yoga now, but I was really trying to jump into the mindset of, you know, a podcaster or someone who wanted to turn this into something a lot bigger and be the experience really didn't resonate with everyone. It didn't. And it, I don't even know if it even resonated with myself. Um, a lot of the things that I talked about were things that, uh, they were concepts and they were ideas and they were, Uh, They were listened to from books that I had been reading and listening to, and I was taking a lot of what those people were saying and just kind of repurposing it back into my podcast. Uh, I had some great interviews in Be The Experience. The podcast no longer exists, but I had some great interviews with some people, and it really gave a snapshot of those people and where I was in my head at that time. Maybe one of these days, I will share those as bonus content uh, for you if you want to ever check them out. So after Be The Experience happened, it was really, it was a seasonal podcast Then I was approached by the radio station uh, to do a podcast. They said, we want you to do a podcast with rock stars. We want you to do something with them so that, um, you know, we can we can start getting into this podcasting game. And at the time, the radio station and the company itself as a whole had just purchased up, you know, they had purchased podcast one at the time. So my company is Hubbard Radio Broadcasting. If you live in a, a city where there's a Hubbard Broadcasting uh, radio station, uh, and you hear the ads about podcast one, it's because the company owns stake in that particular other company, you know, podcast one. So, uh, there was this real big push on creating podcast content for, uh, for the company. And so at the time I had created this thing called swing shift side hustle. I was, you know, it was really cool to do these interviews with rock stars, people within my niche, But it, too, was also a seasonal podcast. It was also difficult to get the interviews from these rock stars because, you know, I could only get them when they came through town for shows. And, you know, if I would have still had that podcast today to this day, everything would be on Zoom. But it was already hard enough to get these artists. And so to come up with that content, um, there was uh, there was a big collaboration effort. It wasn't you know, a bad thing at all, but, uh, there were a lot more, there was a lot more red tape that I had to go through in order to get a podcast up. And so then that podcast just went away. So then we continued to build, you know, fast forward, we continued to build out more videos on YouTube, answering more questions to help out podcasters. And then it wasn't up until a few weeks ago, as of this particular recording that I had gotten an Instagram message from, uh, this woman out in Hawaii. And she had seen one of my videos on YouTube and she uh, had seen, I guess, some podcast, the po- basic podcast setup video. I think that's what it was. And she instantly went over to Instagram and sent me a direct message and said, Hey, how can you help me? Now I do have services on my website where I will help people. I will consult with them. I will tell them what they need to do with their podcast. And as we were talking about that, and I told her, here are my con- consultation fees. She was like, well, I think this is a little bit out of my range. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I'm feeling really generous right now. Uh, I typically charge for my time, but you know what? Uh, She seems pretty, 
you know, desperate right now. Uh, I don't want her to make, make it sound like she was desperate, but I just wanted to help her. I really wanted to help her because I didn't want money to come in between me and her and me helping get her podcast up and moving. Now, I don't do this all the time. I typically do charge for time. And I was at work at that time and she she messaged me and she called me and we we did a call over Instagram and uh, her name ended up being Laura and Laura ended up, uh, you know, she was, she just gotten the roadcaster pro and she was trying to figure out how to get this whole thing set up. And she was feeling frustrated. She just didn't know how to get it all set up. And so we spent the next 30 minutes on a zoom call setting up her roadcaster pro to where it would basically do the exact same thing that my Yamaha MG 10 X U would do. And so as we went through and we, you know, turned some dials, went into some menus and set everything up, she was blown away. And she's like, I cannot believe that we did this. I can't believe that you did this. And so then she kept asking me questions about podcasting and, you know, wh what my background was and all that. And so then I asked her questions, you know, what are you trying to do? And she told me exactly what her podcast was all about. I know that she was going into a podcast about psychedelics. So I might have Laura on the podcast at some point in time uh, to see how she her startup process is. But really, we, we formed a friendship out, out of this. And so uh, we left that call and then that was pretty much it. And then the next day I heard back from her. She had other questions and I thought, yeah, let's just I'll answer that question for her. And. We ended up doing a Zoom call and she asked me some questions and then she had told me that she had told her friends and I believe at the time uh, her husband had come into the room and we were on the call initially and she said that uh, this is my podcast therapist and I thought, oh my God, that's it right there. The podcast therapist. That's the name of my podcast because I do listen to people's uh, problems with podcasting. I hear what they have to say on my YouTube channel and then I, tr I try to give them the best prescribed answer of what I think would be better for them when it comes to their podcast. So that's how the podcast therapist was born out. Now, as of this recording, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I knew the steps that I, what I needed to take to get the podcast therapist off the ground and running. Okay. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about your launch step sequence. Really, we're going to talk about first, we're going to talk about the audio uh, workstations that you're going to be working out of. But I want to talk to you about setting up and getting ready to, to get this podcast up and running and the steps that you need to take to get your podcast up and moving. But just as a, you know, I will just give you the short version of this. I started, you know, buying domain names and I started trying to come up with artwork concepts and, you know, the artwork concepts, they evolved and they continued to evolve. And so I started developing this artwork inside of Adobe Illustrator and just kept going at it and working at it and making it what I wanted to. Now, your question, maybe you have the question, you might ask yourself, well, why didn't you have a podcast beforehand about podcasting before? Why didn't you just do this? And to be quite honest, I just wasn't comfortable with having the right name. And I have videos on my YouTube channel where I tell podcasters, create your podcast, come up with the name and just get it out there. But I, I could say that I was not following my own advice. All these podcasters that I'd seen out there had, you know, these really cool names, or maybe they just had these really bland names, but I wanted a name that would stand out. What I didn't realize is that I could actually pivot the name over. I could actually change the name later on down the line and just pivot it. It would make make it more difficult later on down the line as far as being discovered, but I knew that I could do that, but I didn't, that's why I didn't release a podcast at all. Uh, I, you know, I tried to come up with a podcast name, unnecessary explanations. And in fact, I was going to use that as the initial podcast. Uh, there was another one called mix down. I wanted to call it the mix down, but I thought it might confuse the idea of podcasting with say, uh, creating, I guess, beats or music and things like that. And so I had artwork already built out for all of this and I was getting ready to release the podcast, but then I just decided, no, I, I, it just doesn't feel right. So I would say to you, if it doesn't feel right, keep searching for that answer. Keep thinking about the name of the podcast, but don't let it over consume you like it consumed me because you can change it later on down the line. I was lucky that Laura had said, oh my God, you're my podcast therapist, because I thought, what a great way to come up with a podcast name. You know, she came up with something that does not even exist, but it combined two things that we are very used to hearing about. We hear a lot about people going to therapy, different types of therapy, whether it be for mental health or whether it be for physical health. So there's therapists that way. And then 
the area in which I wanted to focus on is for podcasting. So maybe you are a business owner. Maybe you are someone who's an entrepreneur. I really want to focus on helping these people take that podcast to the next level. They may hear a lot of the same things with the podcast therapist that they might hear in other podcasts. But my main purpose and focus is to hopefully clarify and make it easier for you to jump in and build a brand new skill. That's all I want you to do is I want you to build a brand new skill. If you aren't building skills, then you're not advancing. I can say this for myself. I can say it for the people that I've helped. If you aren't building a brand new skill, you aren't advancing in creating quality content. So that's really the story of how the podcast therapist has come to being. This is what you're listening to right now. And I am so happy that you are listening right now. It means so much to me that you have decided to go ahead and listen to this particular episode. As I said before in the beginning of this particular podcast, this is considered a utility episode. This one and the next episode, who knows, maybe if the third episode is going to be a utility episode, but these are meant for you to listen to, to get an idea and a gauge on when it comes down to starting up a podcast. So if you guys have questions or you want to reach out to me, I encourage you to reach out to me and ask me those questions at thepodcasttherapist.com slash podcast. That is going to take you directly to my website. It's actually, the website is theshanman.com, but we're just going to make it easy, thepodcasttherapist.com slash podcast, and that'll take you directly to the podcast page, and you're going to see a player up there. You're going to see the podcast artwork, but you're also going to see the contact me section. You can leave me a message on Facebook. You can leave me a message on Instagram. I would really love it if you actually left me a voice message so that I can feature it in another segment of unnecessary explanations. I'll do my best to answer your question for you. So again, thank you so much for tuning in to the the podcast therapist this week. I really appreciate it. One other thing and favor that I would have to ask for of you is that if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, I want to encourage you to head on over there and leave me a five-star rating and a review. That will help get this into the ears of other people who are listening or looking for the information on podcasting. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe in whichever podcast platform that you're listening to. If you're trying to figure out which podcast platform you want to listen to your po- this podcast on, again, you just got to go to the podcasttherapist.com slash podcast. And I have the listings of all the podcast platforms up there for you. So again, thank you so much for listening this week. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Take care. Podcast Therapist. Mixdown Media Production.